We're still building up some footage for the next Grant episode and the Stug 3 project is on hold while Bo takes some extended leave. So in the meantime, we thought we'd share with you what we've been up to in getting our M5 Stewart up and running in time for Oz Armor Fest this year. Hi, I'm Kurt from Oz Armor and welcome to Workshop Wednesday. Our M5 Stewart is a terrific exhibit, but we've been having a little bit of trouble with it lately. One engine would crank and start and the other one was either a starter motor or, or something in the engine was seized. So we, we brought over the workshop and we tried to turn it by hand, um, no no good. So then we've looked further and what we've done is we've removed the, the oil pan or the sump. You can see we found bits of conrod and bearing and all sorts of stuff. And we found a, a conrod's let go. Looks like uh, uh, the big end cap is let go by the bolts or something like that. And the conrod's come around and wrapped itself around everything. And smashed it all smashed, up. Yeah, it's yeah. gone and smashed the camshaft, smashed the block. It's done a lot of damage. So that's the, the other engine that, that runs, that's good, that engine. Um, we're gonna probably save that for a, a later project. Why that, is that? Why that couldn't engine. we just put that one back in with another with a new engine? Uh, trying to source one of these, it's like next to impossible. You gotta have two of the same. Yeah, two, two of the, the, two of the same engines. Yeah, that's, that's right. So what we've got here, we've sourced two, uh, two 350 Chevs. So these are a Vortec, later model Chev, and they're gonna take place of the old uh, Cadillac We've also sourced some GM transmissions, from Turbo 350s. It was too hard to try and adapt the, those old transmissions to these late model sheds. Those transmissions versus a Turbo 350, they're almost identical in size, so they fit quite well. So far, what we've been doing is we've been uh, mocking up the transmissions, the new transmissions and the new engines. So far, we have the new transmissions sitting in place. We've um, modified the rear mounts to suit and we've kept it the same as how this these engines are originally fitted it's on those slight angles like that so you can see here that's for one mount and same as on the other side that's for the other engine on the left side and see how it's down lower and you can see that plane oh yeah you see that plane through there the mount on the rear of the gearbox the the automatic is on that same plane so we've just made the mount sit flat on the transmission and bolted it down and it's gone to that angle for us. So first thing I'll, uh, I'm gonna bolt this flex plate on and then we're gonna lift the engine and we're gonna put our oil filter, which goes on here. And there's obviously this bit of timbers in the way. Um, so we're gonna lift it with a forklift, move it back a little bit. So we, got, we can put our oil filter on and have it hanging down. And then we're gonna pull this dizzy out, uh, fill it with oil. And I've got a special tool that goes in to drive the oil pump with, with a um, electric drill. And we're gonna build pressure, oil pressure. Once we get oil pressure, and we know we've got oil circulating throughout the whole system. You can get this. You can get this around the wrong way. That this this is the wrong way. So we've got a dowel on our bolt holes. So if we if we put it on this way, we would never get our, our converter to bolt up to this. It'd be that'd be in the way. So they act, they actually go this way. There we go. Ryan has brought a lot of cool gear with him when he started work with us like this torque wrench. With this, he can tighten the bolts to as close to the manufacturer's standard as possible. Oh, oh too far. <laughs> <laughs> so we're at 65, and I probably I'm not gonna go to 65 straight away. I'm gonna go around um, in a cross pattern. So we're just gonna sort of get them snug. And you can probably see what my torque is there now. That's that's how much torque I'm putting on it. You should really hold the handle, but here. So we're at about 24 pounds there. And you want to be at 65. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. we're not talking this up yet. And we'll show you how this, um, this works. So we can see here. So we're torque. See how it beeps and carries on. So yeah, perfect. Talk to the manufacturer setting. Nice. Come with our crate engines. 
Um, same thing as you saw. Just got to fill them up. Yeah, just got to fill them up. Getting oil. So I've already checked the surface. It's clean under here. Yeah, so that's our thread for our oil filter. Straight on. Right on. I'm going to just set the timing. So I'm going to set it so top dead. So this is your top dead indicator on the timing cover. But when we turn the crank and we line it up with that, we're on uh, top dead cylinder number one, so top dead center. This is cylinder number one. Okay. Um, so you can be 180 out, so you can be on cylinder number six. As you can see, we're cylinder number one here. And see, we're almost, we're almost on, on our mark. So now we're lining that up. Pretty much right on. Yeah. Put it on here and then we'll mark it on the manifold. Just so when it goes back in, I'm going to put it all right in the exact same position. And then it's set how they've had it set from factory. Um, do you want to chuck oil in this, Rob? Yep. So you can pour that in. I won't do anything. So that, that gear drop, runs off the camshaft, and then that drive drives the oil pump underneath. So this is um, oil pump drive, like a, a primer, and that goes in here like that. There we go. So we're at, in the safe range now. Well, hopefully we're going the right way. We'll see, we should see it build oil pressure. Yeah, we're good Nick. So we've got all through the whole engine now. Oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah, primed, ready to go. Yeah. Mark there. But we're out. But when. So we're out of tooth, but one thing is you can, you do have adjustment on the distributor. So I know that as long as I line this up with this mark, it's going to be exactly where it was before. This is the torque converter. To non-mechanical folk, it's a complicated piece of engineering that enables an automatic engine to run even if the vehicle is stationary. Without it, the vehicle would always be wanting to drive forward, and putting your foot on the brake would result in it stalling immediately. If you want to learn more about torque converters, through the magic of the internet, you can find a plethora of channels that can do it a lot better than what I can. Go. Sam in. You can feel it's going all the way in too. Now engine number one is ready to fit in. Nice one. mounts in the way because we've got to drop the back of the engine down into the transmission. Looks good. Oh.
Just come down a bit. That's it. I got him. Woo. <laughs> Getting the other one in will be tricky. You yeah, won't have any, you won't have any room. I have to lay over the top of everything. Oh man. That's all right. Yeah. I'll just get the rest of these bolts in. Man, yeah. Ready for the next one. Yeah, the only thing we've just got to put the, the engine, the actual mount bolts in, but it's sitting in there nice. It's got these little locators, as you can see in there. Um, yeah, so it's not going anywhere at the moment. At the moment, yep. <laughs> That's yeah. good. Time to finish off and fit engine two. Look at that. Straight in. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. I'm getting more flexible. <laughs> Can you drive back a bit? Yes. You can see. <laughs> Looks excellent. Voila. There we go. <laughs> so yeah, next step, two tail shafts, the weld on yokes and the uni joint. We'll just finish off the wiring. We're gonna finish off the fuel system. Hooking up the radiators as well. We've got to plumb them up hook the ignition system up, Air linkages for the throttle and also the shift linkages for the transmissions run the um, auto cooler lines and the then the coolers for the transmissions. Yeah, we've got thermo fans to fit. I've got a whole list there. Bit, bit yeah, to do. Yeah, there's a lot still to do. Before we get on with any of that, Rob and Ryan start fitting the starter motors it's and alternators. Fancy. So shiny. 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 Precious. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan has to also fit the bolts that connect the flywheel to the torque converter. So these converter bolts will come in through here. I'll have to turn the crank actually, I think. <laughs> All right, hold it there. Tighten them up. Do these have to be tightened with the uh Yeah, they're gonna be torqued. Torqued. Yep. How are you gonna do that in here? With great difficulty. <laughs> I'm just gonna this one I just wanna go in a little bit more because it's gonna I don't want to hit the block. Yep, so we've got the starter motor. Yeah, we've got two of these straight up on the block 
into this position here and we'll um, get these on there now. Did these come with the engine? Uh, yeah, no. Yeah, they did. I bought them separately, but yeah, they... They're suited for this. They're suited for this engine, yeah. I was told they were suited for this, so... They should work. Rob fits the alternators and we call it a day. After the weekend, we got some rain which was really good for my audio recording. Rob starts by fitting the belts to the alternators. When running, the alternator converts the motor's mechanical energy into electrical energy, keeping the batteries charged up. Put a reflection on there. Yeah, we'll recheck it once we run it, because <laughs> it will probably fit that in a little bit. Pretty good. Well, I thank you. Oh. A bit more. <laughs> a little bit more. Yeah. In order for petrol engines to work, they need a spark. The distributor, which we watched Ryan calibrate earlier, delivers electricity through these red lines into the spark plugs in the engine. Uh, so this is the terminal end for the spark plug. Um, so ignition lead, we've just trimmed them down. And we're just recrimping these new ends on so we, we, we don't have leads like spaghetti going everywhere. You see my little dynamite sticks? We can just fold the, um, fold the wire over and then just crimp the end on, put the covers back on there. And then they should be about the right length. That just creep it on. That's done. Oh, it's just took so swing arm there. That's a stuck swing arm. Yeah. <laughs> we just done the steel lift bench to get the vice. Is that both sides? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, there's three on each side that already fit. Um, All we have time for today. Join us next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour and I'll see you on the next one.